It is time, Tenno. Wake up, Tenno. Welcome home, Tenno. My name is Talga Hurst, and this is Warframe. Welcome back, Tenno. Talga Hurst here to pick up where we left off in the Beginner's Guide to Warframe. I left you last time with a general overview of who it is that you are within the Warframe universe, and a hint at what we're going to look into today. What you see here, and have seen several times during Vor's Prize, is the star chart. This is the first layer you have to make a selection in, in order to get to a mission, and provides a basic level of information for you. At a quick glance, the star chart is a clutter of information. There's a bar to the top with strange symbols with red numbers floating next to them, and matching symbols and different symbols floating above each of the planets. These are the symbols for quests, for alerts, and invasions, with the invasions marked onto the different planets by a floating faction symbol. What we're going to do to begin with is just show the simple level of the core gameplay loop. You'll select a planet, and see what mission nodes are available to you. Surrounding each planet are the different mission nodes. Nodes with a white border around them and slight static are mission nodes that are available for you to select but have not yet completed. Missions that have no border that you can still select are missions that you've already completed and may replay. You oftentimes will replay missions to get more resources or to level up Warframes and their weapons. Mission nodes that are, are grayed out and covered in static, you cannot select, as they have not been unlocked yet. In order to unlock a mission node, you must complete the mission sitting right next to it. So in this case, I have not yet played the Zagan node on Europa. Should I play it and complete it, the node next to it the Lazric sector, or Larzac sector, will unlock and be available for me to play. You're probably wondering what the different symbols were and how that affects the mission notes. Where do you play those? All three of these first three symbols will take over nodes on different planets. For instance, alerts are missions that are available only for a limited amount of time, this time ranging from 30 minutes to 24 hours, and completion of them give a range of special rewards. Most frequently, these are large quantities of credits, but can also provide resources or blueprints for helmet cosmetics for a Warframe. These mission types oftentimes involve enemy factions that are not typical to a planet, and are oftentimes in a higher level than the planet that it has taken over. When you open the alerts tab, a drop down menu will appear showing what the reward is, the mission type and enemy levels, as well as which enemy faction you're up against. The rectangle with a triangle wedge taken out of it is for the Grenier, a circle with a triangle in the center with a circle in the center of that is for the Corpus, and this triangle made of arrowheads is for the infested, a twisted aberration of the other factions infected by the Technocyte virus. Alert missions take over a node on a planet and are marked by an orange color and the alert logo over the top of that. When you select an alert mission, it will give you the option to either play the regular mission or play the alert. These enemy faction symbols that you see for alert missions are also important in invasion missions. In this case, the infestation has invaded Mars and Pluto, at which point you as a Tenno are tasked with helping the Grenier, an enemy faction, push back this mindless infestation. These missions, for the infested, are marked by a green color to a mission node and the infested logo on it. Much like alerts, when you select a mission, 
you can either play the regular mission node or complete the infested outbreak. With invasions, be it against the infested or against an enemy faction versus another enemy faction, you must complete the mission node three times in order to get the reward. In this case, if we go back to Pluto and try and complete the Hydra mission, we will have to complete it three times in order for the Grenier to pay us in two mutagen mass. The mutagen mass is a clan resource, which I'll get into when we go into crafting. For other invasions, where it's Corporus versus Grenier, you as a Tenno get to choose which side to fight for. Depending on which side you fight for three times determines what the pay will be. Invasion missions are very simple. They're much like exterminate missions in that you're working with one of the factions to eliminate all remaining enemy faction on that node. Now that we have a better understanding of how to read the star chart and what the different symbols mean, let's take a look at the individual mission nodes and what you're going to be doing just on a regular basis. Each mission node is a unique mission and tile set. And as we can see here, I have a mission that I have already completed, one that I have yet to complete, and one that I have yet to unlock. The pop-up that comes up above each mission node gives you all the, mission, all the information you're going to need before actually loading in and completing it. In the case of this node, it is an exterminate mission against the corpus, and the corpus are going to range in level from 21 to 23. And there are currently no open slots in active player squads right now. The image to the right on this info bar shows me what tile set is going to be used when the game procedurally generates the mission's level. There are certain tiles that are restricted to specific mission types. For example, spy missions have unique data rooms that you will not find in other missions. The objectives of each mission are fairly self-explanatory. Exterminate tasks you with killing all of the enemy in a given node, whereas Sabotage tasks you with destroying a reactor or mining equipment. Upon completion of a mission, any resources or cash that you uh, that you receive from drops from loot uh, loot crates or enemies you will collect and take with you back to your ship some missions like spy defense and survival missions aren't any more complicated in terms of objective but will, pro will provide additional rewards upon completion in spy missions for each data cache collected you'll receive additional credits or void keys or mods. The last two reward options I'll save for another episode. Whereas in defense and survival missions, you'll be given similar rewards to spy missions at every five minute interval. And you may continue survival missions and defense missions for an indefinite amount of time, with each five minute segment getting progressively more difficult, while still providing you with new rewards. In those types of missions, you will only receive the reward if you success successfully extract out of the mission. Failing in any mission, not just defense or survival, means that you forfeit any and all resources, rewards, and cash except for experience and a small handful of the credits. Now I keep saying resources as a reward. Vor's prize goes into very little detail as to why resources are important. It does give you an item to craft and use with the resources, but it does little to explain what it is that you're doing. The whole gameplay cycle of Warframe is to run missions to collect resources to make new gear. Here is where you'll build new weapons, Warframes, some gear and some cosmetics in the foundry. What you see here in these different tabs are what we call blueprints. The vast majority of blueprints are available to you in the market, whereas others are special drops from enemies or mission rewards. For example, 
most Warframe blueprints are special drops from assassination missions. But let's take a look at some of the weapons that I'm building. My Amprex, as we can see, needs all eight of the Feldron, a handful of Plastids, but I have completed collecting all of the Ferrite I need, as well as all of the Argon Crystals that I'll need. Now, Plastids are a regular drop f as a resource on some of the planets. But Feldron is one of those clan resources that I talked about earlier. In order to have a clan resource, you have to collect five samples of Feldron or Mutagen Mass or Detonite Ampules and then combine them with a blueprint that you can buy from your clan dojo. We're going to skip the Amprex because we're going to look at clan resources more when I get to the episode about clans. But instead, let's take a look at my Boltor Prime. I have all of the components I need except for five missing Oricon cells. Oricon cells are a rare resource drop on Saturn. I remember this. So we'll tr start looking there. We'll leave the foundry. Run up the top to navigation. And take a trip to Saturn. Here on the right hand side, we can see the different resources available on this planet. From top to bottom, it's ordered in rarity for the first three items. With the fourth item being the clan resource sample. Nanospores and plastids will be common drops from enemies or loot crates. The Oricon Cell is a rare resource drop and will only sometimes drop from enemies or loot crates. Knowing that Oricon Cells are the rare resource here, we get to plan out how we're going to go about farming this rare resource. Some players say that they have better odds getting rare resources by completing several rounds of defense or survival type missions. Others, like myself, feel like that we have better odds by killing the bosses on assassination nodes. I myself prefer the boss method as bosses have a guaranteed chance to drop resources and have an higher odds of dropping the rare resource that I'm looking for. These rare resources drop in quantities of one to three in a single pickup. So what we're going to do is select this assassination mission, kill the boss, and see what we can get from it. So we spent enough time looking at menus and not really seeing any of the gameplay. Let's fix that by completing this assassination mission and killing Sargus Ruck a few times. So assassination missions task us with killing a specific boss. In order to do that, we have to move through a procedurally generated level against enemies, in this case the Grenier, and get to the boss's room. My group is a good distance ahead of me. Not necessarily concerning themselves with the generic unit. Instead, they're running straight for the boss, likely farming the same thing that I am. The next room is the boss room, as they triggered the cinematic, but chose not to watch it. Here we are. Taking care of Sargus Ruck and the additional enemies. Bosses in this game have unique mechanics and can't simply be damaged just by shooting them enough times. In the case of Sargus Ruck, we have to wait until his weak point opens. Just like in other video games that you've played, bosses have their weak points 
have special things that they have to do, and different uh, completion scenarios. In this case, his first one's already been destroyed. His weak point's marked by the glowing blue light on his armor. So we shoot that a few times. I said shoot the... Kept hitting his armor. Machine guns are not good for accurate shots. There we go. Watch the numbers fly. Deal a little damage. And see if we can't break the second portion of his armor. He's now in his third phase. Armor's on the back. Blasted a few times. While trying to avoid being lit on fire. And down he goes, dropping only nanospores this time. So we'll have to complete this a few more times to get Oricon cells. We've completed our task. And are instead going to try and run through the level, skipping all of the enemies to get to the exit. And here's the exit. At the end of every mission, we'll see this page. It shows us the experience that we've gained for our what warframes and weapons, what mods we received, and what item rewards and resources we've received. Be it credits, armor, blueprints, or resources. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this a few times, but not necessarily record it, because I don't know how long it's going to take. And just like in a cooking video, when we come back, I'll have all of the resources that I need, and we'll start building the Boltor Prime. So after farming Sargus Ruck for nearly three hours, finally have enough Oricon cells to make my Boltor Prime. I have plenty of barrels, the one receiver I need, plenty of stocks, and all the Oricon cells that I need. But I need one more thing in order to make the weapon in order to craft whatever it is that I'm crafting. And that's credits, which you see in the bottom left right here. So it's going to cost me 15,000 credits to make the Boltor Prime. I have 515,000 credits in my inventory right now. Plenty to get it started. And it says it'll take 12 hours to build. As we can see on another weapon that I'm building, it's got seven hours left on it. This, like many free-to-play games or mobile games that you've played, has everything on timers. So let's build the Boltor Prime and start that timer. So we've got 11 hours, 59 minutes, 53 seconds until this weapon is complete. You've done it. You've crafted your first weapon. I've crafted my... I've lost count in how many weapons, but it's another weapon. It's a remake of one of my favorites, the Boltor. I'll probably end up doing a video just on this weapon, because I love it that much. To And to get myself started on doing uh, weapon videos. So as a player, after you've crafted something, you can either wait for the timer to run out, be it however long it is, ranging from one minute to three days, depending on what you're building, or you can rush build it. But that requires platinum. And platinum is the cash resource. You give money to digital extremes in exchange for platinum. So in order to rush this weapon, it would cost me 50 platinum to make it. I have 82. And for the sake of expediency and the sake of this video, let's rush it. So I'm going to select it, complete the build time. And now I have a brand new weapon. Taken out of the menu. It's in my inventory now. Crafting is complete. One of the best parts about the crafting system in Warframe is that nearly everything 
can be crafted at no cost to you. All you have to do is play the game, grind out the resources in order to craft it. All of the weapons are available to be made in game. All of the warframes are available to be made in game. You do not have to buy them. The only things that you cannot craft are certain cosmetic items, like skins for your ship or bobbleheads. Everything else, completely obtainable in game. Things like platinum can be earned through late game farming and selling it to other players. Or you can get platinum yourself and use it to rush build weapons, not have to craft things and buy the items. Or what I s recommend is if you do spend money on platinum, use it to get more inventory slots. Use it to get more slots for warframes, more slots for weapons. You start off as a player with, I believe it is six warframe, warframe slots. That's still plenty. And for a new player, that's more than enough. More than what you need. If you decide to really commit yourself to the game, if you enjoy it enough to where you want more than six frames, I recommend dropping a couple bucks. But saving that platinum for inventory slots. Everything else can be made just by playing. But now you know the different missions, where to get resources, what type of resources there are, faster ways of getting the resources through alerts or invasions, and how the crafting system actually works. In the next episode, I'll look at mods and how to make your warframes and weapons even better, allow you to do better late game content. Tenno, enjoy yourselves. Make yourself some weapons, get out there, and continue the fight.